Hi knitters, welcome to PJ Knits. It's another episode from the back seat of the car in my local park on a sunshiny Tuesday. October 12th, 72 degrees and it's transitional sweater weather still around here. Today's episode is has an, um, a working title of the fish or cut bait episode. You know, I've seen a lot of um, podcasters and people showing their whips on their uh, podcasts lately, which of course got me to thinking about my um, whips as well. And those who know me well know that I have a lot of whips. No apologies. You know, that's what keeps um, me knitting is casting on something new, knitting it a while. And then it also means that it looks like I have a lot more finished objects than I do because I finish them. But anyway, this is the Fisher Cut Bait episode that I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, at home, and I thought I'd thrown it in my little bag of tricks here, but I did not. I have a journal that I keep all of my knitting projects in. And when I start a new one, I put a paper clip in it so that I'll know that that is a whip, basically, is, is the thought process there. Um, and so I got to thinking with seeing um, a couple of people doing some trying to finish up their whips uh, for 2021, um, I thought it might be nice if I at least finished the whips that were in my current thoughts journal. Um, so my first test run of uh, pulling out my whips, really what happened is I had like maybe three or four that I cut bait. Um, one, I ripped out the yarn. Two, I totally just threw away. And the reason I threw them away was there's no salvaging the yarn. They're, I mean, they've been in their semi-knitted form for many years. And either the style was um, no longer what I wanted, or the fit was a, a previous size, or um, one was a mohair project, and there's just no ripping that back out as far as I needed to go. And so I cut bait on those. So then I went back to my next round of whips and I thought some of these are kind of old but a couple of them were for my current thoughts journal. So I thought I'd just share those with you today just to give you some ideas of what's in my whips going on right now. Um, first up, how do you manage your whips? Um, I have them in my journal but what do you do with the patterns? Do you stick them in the bags that they're in, the whip bag, along with the needles? Um, I have a folder that I put uh, a lot of whip patterns in so they don't get all scrunched in. And I'm really trying to be a lot better about making sure that I put the needle size on there and where I stop recently. Um, I didn't do that on um, everything, but I tried to do that in my journal and on the pattern page, just in case they kind of get separated. So I'm wondering, how do you manage your whips? Or maybe you don't have any long-term whips. Um, I just wonder, let me know what you do. I'm, um, I'm kind of wanting, wanting to know how you manage that whole thing and keep track of what you've got. So let's start with the, um, the whips. But first, I forgot to tell you, my name's Penny. Um, and I live in central Illinois, and I'm a knitter, a blogger, and a YouTube podcaster. And I'm coming from our central Illinois park, local park in my, in my hometown. Um, um, I am Penny J on Ravelry. I am PJ Knits on Instagram. And I have a blog, www.pjknits.blogspot.com. And we have a group also called PJ Knits on Ravelry, where we talk about um, knitting and, and some knit-alongs that are going on. So. Let's jump into the whips now. First of all, this first one I have, this is in um, a local maker, Trappings in Trinkets bag that I have, Nicole. And this particular is one has been, um, I don't have a date as to when it actually started, but I can remember it's been a while because I bought the yarn at Meg Swanson's Knitting Camp. It's Barocco Ultra Alpaca. I got the idea from Balmary Burns. She is a designer, she knits. And this is one that I cannot find the pattern. But I do know, because I blogged about it years ago, that it is her basic hoodie. And so I could easily, the nice thing about this is I can easily finish this one up. 
she had done back in the day when I first saw this a turquoise um, sweater she left off the hoodie and she did it out of turquoise as well and so I have it I tried it on I finished off the rib a couple of days ago I tried it on it still fits I just have to put the sleeves on it and the ribbing on it so I'm almost done with this and I have plenty of yarn for that and I had the needles in my bag so I knew what size needle that I was working on and what she had done is she had put red buttons on it and so that got me thinking and I have this cute little bag from my friend Norma who um, gave this to me many many years ago she's since passed away you've all heard me talk about um, Norma but I have some red buttons in here and that's what basically Bon Marie had done on hers when she had knit hers and so I am going to put and I don't know which one of these red buttons but this was basically it can you see those red buttons on that I can definitely see that and I put the red buttons were still in the bag as well and that's all there was to it and I think at the time that she showed this there was like this really cool silk scarf with the, in the turquoise as well so I'm anxious to finish this one this whip particular whip up putting it back like I said I've got all the yarn it was Barocco Ultra Alpaca and I remember buying it that one summer after I saw it at Meg Swanson's at Schoolhouse Press so I have all the yarn I have sufficient yarn I've made new notes so I know what needle to cast on with that so that's my first whip and I can see that happening this year finishing it up um, and easily if I don't I can't find the pattern and it was pre Ravelry buying days so it's not like I can take it out of my library but I can easily pick those um, stitches up around the sleeve and easily put the rib and then a rib around the neck so I'm not super super worried about finishing um, about having the pattern on that one but that's one that I um, I'm missing my pattern on so my next one is in a bag that um, my friend Victoria gave us some time ago I'm not sure who this oh yes this is two sticks and you bag and some time ago she gave these all to us and in this particular one, I have a hat, and um, this one is called Drizzle on the Window. This is by Susan Rainey, and I love this. Susan's a friend from Knitting Camp. I love uh, the patterns that she creates. And so what I've got is I cast this on, I want to say a couple, last year, a couple years ago. Um, out of, this is out of um, Carol Sunday yarn, her An Angelique. It's an ice blue and I've got I've got beads in there for it several different sizes of beads I also have as well cast on for it and I did that like I said that was um, probably last year a year before that I did that so I love to work on this one too this and um, I've never done anything with beads before and so I have several things in here um, Susan does some great uh, great jobs with her um, patterns of giving you um, good information of how to put the things on and how to knit and and specialties on it so I highly recommend hers but I got a couple of things I've got some really small uh, crochet hooks and I also have this thing called the uh, Flegel beater that I bought some time ago in this bag I'm not sure which I'm going to use or what I should be using but that's in my bag so I'm really all set to go um, the patterns in there as well and that's uh, again, that's Drizzle on the Window, yeah, by Susan Rainey. Isn't that cool? I even I even have the pom-pom at home ready to go on that one. So that is the second whip that I found that I wouldn't mind doing. My next one is in this sheepy bag. This is from the Silver Shed USA, and I think she's starting to retire. And this is a bag that I bought some time ago. This particular one, I cast this one on in October of 2016. This one is called the Shell Millen Snood. And this is going to be my winter project for working on um, my, my color work technique because I'm not as comfortable with it as I'd like to be. It's by Donna Smith. And this particular one, I am using Lost City Knits yarn. You know, that's a favorite. 
This particular yarn is called Foothills Fingering. And it's going to be several different colorways of that. I love this. And this one is kind of, I think it's on its way out, kind of discontinued. So I'm sad because this is my most favorite one ever of her yarns. I love working on that. And so I've just got a little start on that. And here it is. You can see the different color. You, I'm going to do different colorways. I have bunches of different gradient, uh, different colorways of the turquoise left over from um, shawl some time ago. So I'm going to use that and I'm just kind of playing with my uh, with my color work. And this, I think by the time I get done, this would be a great um, practicing with color work. So that is set and going as well. Then next up is um, a pattern that, I don't get my notes here, um, April 2017. And this particular one is called the Helsinki Sweater. And this is by um, Janine Bages. She's another, um, I've talked about her color workbook and we'll talk about her again um, down the road. I met Janine through Knitting Camp and she was a long time attendee. And so this is the sweater. And at the time I bought the kit, I bought the exact colorways. And this is a dark, dark navy with some color work on it. And that's called Helsinki Sweater. This one is in a Molly Klein design bag. And I put it in the navy uh, Snoopy Celestial because I thought, well, that's perfect for the yarn that that is. And I'm not very far along on it. Um, I'm on the second sleeve. Janine has you start with the sleeves, which tend to be your swatch as well. So not much to see here right now, but I do have a sleeve, three quarter sleeve. And when I tried it on the other day, it fits. So I'm pretty pleased about that. So that's the Helsinki sweater, another whip that, um, Right now it's just increasing and knitting around so um, until you get to the yoke and add the sleeve. So I'm, I'm pretty good on gauge with that one as well. Um, next up, in a bag that a friend gave me, my friend Becky, I love this. A lady never discusses the size of her stash, of her yarn stash. This particular one is from December 2017 and it is called the Nice Capade Sweater. This is by Corey Eichelberger and this is out of the book Minnesota 52. We've talked about this book before. This was a collaboration between her and Megan Williams several years ago. And so this next one up for that in here is, I am on the color work with this. I am using, I believe it's Madeline Tosh yarn on it. And I have got the sleeves attached and I've just barely started the color work on it, the snowflakes, but I've got it all set to go. And I think it was like in Ravelry Red and I'm using the original yarn that I found on Ravelry somebody had and I, I'm using the original yarn from um, Corey's design. It has little sequins in it. This would be perfect for Christmas this year if I could get that done. It's the Aria yarn is what it's in uh, from River Knits. So I've got that. Holy moly. And then next up in my Carol Sunday tote. You know I'm a, a fan of hers as well. This one is not far along but this one is called Capture the Moment. And I tried this on years ago at knitting camp. Um, Sally Rainey had knit it and she let me try hers on and I loved it. Only problem with that is it is, um, right now I'm doing the collar and so there's a little bit of work to it. And this is out of that same ice blue that I showed you earlier, right? Has a little bit, this is the collar that's going up and around the neck so I've got quite a bit of that to go and this would be right now is the kind of thing that I want to do when I'm just when it's quiet at night um, to pay attention to that one but that is out of um, Sunday Knits this is out of her Angelette Angelic I always want to call it Angelique but it's Angelic in the ice blue colorway so another um, one of my whips that I've got into the thing okay and then um, almost last but not quite 
this is in a tote that I got, a bag that I got from Sun Valley Fibers several years ago when we went to um, January Thaw. And I picked this one out and this sheep's name is Carmel. And I just happened to have a cousin called Carmel. That's how I could remember it. Originally, I guess it was 2018, it says, yeah. And Silver Shed USA made that. And this particular project is left from uh, 2018. I believe I bought the yarn in 2017 at Stitches Midwest and it started to be my Stitches Midwest project that I would pull and bring with you, me every year to sit and knit while I was waiting for others. But this is called Something Gradient Comes This Way. And a little bit of shine on there. It is a Magpie Fibers pattern. And I bought the yarn from them as well. And this is also, this is Magpie Swanky DK. And, I've, and in three colorways. And this is going to be a great in, um, really a nice knit just to knit um, while watching TV or at appointments or even at uh, knitting type thing. And I love, I want to get this done. And this Swanky DK is very soft and comfortable. So. That is um, whip number seven for those of you who may be keeping count. And finally, the last whip that I'm going to show you today, but not the last whip, but ones that I want to, I'm going to try and finish all of these um, first before I show you all my other ones. And up, oh, buried in the bottom here. This one in a bag from 2018, Meg Swanson's Knitting Camp. Love her bags. Great little tote backs. And this particular one is called the Trio of Cables Blankie. This is a Mary Maxim pattern. Not in color at this time. But it is her Mary Maxim yarn. Baby Blankie. And I don't have any girls. And originally I thought this would be fun to knit and maybe give to hospice. But I think it's too girlish. I think it's it's really meant to be, for, or maybe too babyish is where I was going with that. And so another simple knit. And I love knitting on this one as well. So I'd like to get those. And not only that, to reclaim some of my needles back. You know, um, those you know three or four ones that, that cut bait earlier this week. Um, gave me back some needle sizes and I'm like, yeah, just think of all the needle sizes that are buried in these bags. So those are all of my whips that I would like to concentrate on right now. Um, at least between now and the end of the year, I'll feel good even if I just accomplish a couple of these. Um, I just wanted to check in with you all. Um, it is uh, almost the um, middle of October and um, it's sunshiny here, clear sky. The rest of the week looks like rain, but um, yeah, we'll make do with the rain, won't we? Because it's nice to be able to sit home and um, and knit with the rain. So uh, let me know about your whips. What do you think? Um, what do you do with them? Do you have a lot of whips? You don't have to tell me how many. Um, I do, and that's uh, that's fine. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, things that are going on. Um, we're having a, a couple little an, an illness um, in my house um, and so there may be times when this will be spotty to get away and I, um, um, for the rest of the year but I'm going to try and podcast as much as I can. Um, all will be well. I am fully um, um, in, have a tremendous faith that all will be well and we will um, look at 2022 um, differently um, next year. So anyway, um, I saw a, a commercial about 2022 and I had a commercial, a little funny, a little um, blip and it said, uh, I think it had Kermit sitting there and he said, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not doing 2022 until I see their terms and conditions. So that's kind of the way we're uh, thinking at our house right now, but uh, for right now, um, we're taking it one day at a time. So um, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Um, if you would subscribe, tell a friend. Um, I hope that this is something that um, you enjoy watching. Um, it's my journal of my knitting, and um, I'm glad to have those who come along with me and those who um, um, comment and uh, say, hey, I liked it. So 
I appreciate that so very much. Um, next time we're gonna, I think we're gonna talk winter sweaters next time um, because we'll be, um, I'll have some winter sweaters to show you out of what I have um, knit over the years as well as um, a new one I just finished not too long ago that will be perfect um, for my lifestyle. So until next, next time, knit on with confidence and hope through all crises. Thanks. Bye-bye.